Okay, welcome to another Ginger Mathematician video. So I've had a request to go through question seven on November 2020. So let's get started. We have a function here, so we want the absolute value or the modulus of x cubed minus one over x. And first of all, we need to plot that on our graph using the scale given. It's going to be GDC time. Right, so we get our calculator here, we type in our function. The where, place where we actually find the modulus function, you can go to this button here next to the 9, and you'll see that there's this button right over here. This then gives me the modulus sign I need. So we are going to type this in. Let me just check the question. We've got x cubed minus 1 over x. Always good to write in the correct thing. So um, I can just use this button to give myself a to the power of three minus fraction button, which is control and divide one over X. Now, initially we may not get the graph that we're looking for because the scale is really important. So our scale is between minus 1.5 and 1.5 and minus five and plus five. So before we sketch anything, we need to make sure we put that in. We go through menu, window zoom, window settings, and we're going to put those numbers in. So minus 1.5, and positive 1.5, then minus 5, and 5, we press OK, and then we get the graph that we're looking for. So what's often useful to help you with sketches to make sure you guarantee all those marks is make sure you get where they intercept the x or y axis, just x axis in this case. The way we can do this is press the menu button, analyze graph 0, and this will allow us, if we click before it and after it, to actually highlight these particular points without doing any analysis on the actual function itself. So if you read those off, it goes between minus 1 and 1. That's useful to know. And now we're going to have to draw a sketch, which is going to be fun because I'm not very good at sketching. Right. So let's have a look. So it's going to go down like this. It's going to hit one or minus one. Sorry, there is an asymptotic behavior, so it's not going to touch the axis. It comes down from infinity. It's going to touch at one and then bounce off over here. I would just to make sure I get those marks. I'm going to mark this as minus one and one like so. So I've done that question. Let's now look at part B. So write down the equation of the asymptote of the graph. Well, I think it's quite clear to see here that the asymptote is going to be the y-axis. You can see these lines here approaching the y-axis but never hit it. Um, one other way you can work this out is look for any fraction in your function, absolute value or otherwise, and set the denominator to zero. Well, this makes our life very easy, because then it's just going to be x equal to 0, because we want the bottom to be 0. Alternatively, you could also know that the y-axis is also known as x equals 0. That's another way of finding the same thing. If you want a third method, you can use the trace function on your calculator. So we go to menu, trace, graph trace. And you can see that it, towards zero, you get to what's called undefined. That gives you another piece of evidence that our asymptote is going to be x equals zero. OK, and now for part C, we need to solve the equation f of x equals 2 for values of x between minus 1.5 and 0. Be very careful what domain they give you. So we're looking in this part of the graph. The way we do this, so let me go back to my previous sketch, is essentially we're going to get the calculator to draw a line across and then read off the point or points. I'm not entirely sure. It's going to cross twice or once. That's where our GDC will be useful. It looks like it will cross twice from what's written in the question. So very, very nice. What we can do here, we need to change our window settings back. Okay, and what we do at this point is we press the tab button, which is the button over here. 
we click on 2, it cuts the graph twice, remember we're only looking at this domain here, and we just read off the intersection points. We do this by menu, analyze graph, intersection. Click before, click after, we get our first value, for convenience I'm just going to drag over here, and then our second value, intersection, click before, click after, and then we just read off these two values. So let me write that in. So we have, I like a nice red color, I think. So we're going to go with minus 1.40, rounded to three significant figures, and minus 0 0.47, perfect. Okay, all good, gives us our two marks. The last part is quite tricky. So we've got a mixture of adding something to the function and also we've got this inequality part as well. Now for this question, always worth to look at the domain. So the domain we're working with is between minus 1.5 and 1.5. So we're looking at the entire graph in this case. We want to solve this inequality. Well, the first thing we need to do is go back to our function and add on x squared. So let's do that. So if we go back to our function, I'm now going to delete this function, because it's not necessary anymore. All I'm going to do to this function is I'm going to add on x squared. So I'm going to go plus x squared. Press enter, and you'll see it automatically changes that graph. Yeah? And as you see, it's got kind of pushed it upwards slightly. Then we're still going to use 2. Actually, I should have kept the line 2 there. We do this by pressing tab and just go 2, like so. And in this case, we want to solve an inequality. So we want to work out the zone where um, the function is less than 2, so less than the line. Well, in order to solve this, we're going to have to find these intersection points. 1, 2, 3, 4. So let me quickly do that now. Okay, so you see the intersection points here. So our answer is going to be between minus 1.15 and 0.54, rounded to three significant figures, or the answer will be between 0.54 and 1.15. There's a kind of symmetry going on here. Okay, so as I was saying, so we're going to look for the range between here and here and here and here. That is when the blue line or the blue curve is lower than the red curve. So that's what we fill in. So let's see if I can fill this in side by side. It makes it a bit easier for me. I'm going to still stick with red. So our answer will be minus 1.15 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to minus 0 0.54. And... We kind of mirror image, so 0 0.54 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 1.15. Okay, so these are our two answers together. A much more difficult question. We'll look at the examiner's report here and see that it's quite trickier to do. So here's the mark scheme here, so you can look through this um, at your leisure. So again, feel free to pause the video if you need to. And what I'd like to do here with this question is also show you the examiner report. That's really important. So generally, 7a was correctly done. Um, some people struggled with finding the modulus function, which happens. So make sure you know your GDC. Uh, B was generally well answered. So finding the asymptote. Make sure you do write x equals 0. And question C was much more challenging. Um, and interestingly, the mistake that was made is people not rounding correctly, which is interesting. I would have thought the problem there was actually drawing the line on the GDC, but the problem actually was the rounding, which is uh, very interesting. And the last part was a little bit more tricky. You see you had to add on the x squared to your function, and then you're looking for below that red line and that range of values. So that certainly was trickier, definitely the AA star part of the question. Right, hope you enjoy it, and I'll see you on the next video. All right, bye-bye.